Today we would be beginning with a very interesting topic and that is eye one of the major sense organs now we already know there are five sense organs we have eye ears then we have the sense of smell through the nose we have the touch receptors which is which are present in the skin and then we have uh, the tongue which basically sends the taste now if we talk about eye what it actually does is it converts the light energy into electrical energy and the whole process which is uh, can i can say can be divided into two sections one is the concept of physics where we understand the concept of light the properties of light and the second is the structure of the eye and how it is similar to a pinhole camera so today we would be talking about the structure of eye in detail now let's understand the structure of eye if we understand our eye itself we understand that you have the white layer that is there and this white layer is not present just in the front but it is present in the whole of the eye now this eye could be considered as a ball which is having a outermost layer which is white in color except the center part the cornea which is transparent through which the light actually goes in so the white layer that we can see outside the pupil and the iris that is there we'll understand these terms in a while is the scurla now scurla is a layer which is tough outer coating that is present it is not only present in the front but also on the periphery so on this whole ball on all the sides you would have scurla that would be present except the very front where this scurla would not be white in color but would be transparent so that is the first and the most important concept the next most important concept is out within this white layer that we have we have the circle of the eye that is visible and there there are two further circles concentric rings we could say one inside other the innermost one is the pupil and outside the pupil is the iris now what is the role of the iris iris basically helps in understanding the color of the eye and it controls the size of the pupil we would understand the concept of accommodation in higher standards where we would understand this in more detail in the coming sections now the next important thing is the pupil now what does pupil actually does pupil is a pigment uh, pu pupil basically has a black pigment that is present which absorbs all of the light that is falling in and the size of this pupil is basically governed by what this is governed by iris so that is the frontmost structure that we have talked about now where does the image actually form the image forms on the retina which could be seen in the back of the eye so on this ball that we are talking about right now we were on the front which is the pupil the iris that is visible to us and on the back side of this ball we would have what we would have the retina that is present and on this retina you would have the image that would be formed now again we have another important concept which is the lens now this lens that is present is suspended by the suspendary ligaments and it is supported by the ciliary muscles now this lens between this lens and the outermost cornea that is present you have the aqueous humor that is filled in and between the lens and the back side so beyond the lens the back side of the eye you would have the vitreous humor that is present vitreous humor is a jelly like substance aqueous humor which is present towards the outside region outside the lens between the lens and the cornea we could say is watery pigment so that is a major difference between aqueous humor and vitreous humor that is there now as we have already talked about scurla which is the outermost layer and within this scurla we have uh, the other layers that are present which is the retina and on the retina we have fovea that is present now what is fovea fovea is a point where we have the brightest of the all vision what do we mean by brightest of the all vision let's understand this as one of the page that you are looking in at one time only two of the letters of this page would be visible to you in the clearest form we see the whole of the page
page just because our eyes are scanning through it. But at a time, the most precise and the most clear vision we could say is on just two letters of the whole of the page that you could understand. And that is where you have the image formation on the fovea. Now, fovea is able to accommodate only two degree of the area that is there. So, only two degree of the area is accommodated by fovea. Again, a very, very important concept. The next important thing that we need to understand is cornea is the part of the skull itself, as we said, but it is transparent and behind this cornea we have the pupil and the iris that is present on the lens. Conjectiva is a very very thin layer which is present inside the eyelids and it is a kind of continuous layer with the corneal epithelium and this cornea is indeed important because in most cases where we talk about eye donations what is basically transplanted is the cornea which we would understand in more details now the next important thing, as we said about the lens, which is transparent, it is held by the suspendary uh, ligaments that are there. It is flexible and it can change its shape based on the light that is coming in. So based on the light that is coming in, it's trying to create a focus onto the retina behind. And as a result, it has a capability to change its shape. Again, that is a higher level concept that we understand about the adjustment of the lens that is present. Uh, the next important thing that we understand is the choroids. Now, choroids are the layers which have huge amount of blood cells that are present and these lie between the scurla and the retina. So, between the scurla and the retina, you have the uh, choroids that are present and uh, then Another important concept that we need to understand is the kind of vision. Now, we have the day vision as well as the night vision. Now, this day and night vision is understood by the rods and the cones. Rods have the capability to uh, detect light in low intensity. However, cones have a capability to detect different colors. So, a good way to remember is rods and wrath. So, Night vision is attributed to rods. So R and R is what you can remember here. So rods, you would have good vision at the night. And owl is a good example, which has significant proportion of rods which are present in the eye. The next important concept is tear glands. Now just inside our eye, above the uh, eyelids, we have the tear gland that is present. Now this tear gland, keeps on secreting and this secretion lubricates the eye there are two advantages first it is a solution of sodium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate and this helps to wash away any kind of dust that is there or affecting your eye. The second important concept is it has lysosomes. Now we already know what are lysosomes. Lysosomes have an ability to kill bacteria and therefore these uh, tear or these uh, the tear which is secreted from the tear glands basically helps to wash away any kind of bacteria that are going into the eye or affecting the eye. So that is another important concept that we need to understand. And finally, we have the lacrimal glands towards the inner side of the eye. And this is where you have the draining of the tear fluid that takes place into the nasal cavity. So again, a close relation which is seen between your eyes and your nose when you especially cry. So that is a very important concept of lacrimal gland which drains the tears ultimately into your nasal cavity. So understanding this is very very important. A quick recap of the structure. The outermost layer is the skirla which is the white tough coating. The front part of the skirla is transparent and that is cornea. 
Inside the cornea, if you look, we have two concentric rings in our eyes. The innermost ring is the pupil. Outside the pupil, you have iris. Iris has the capability to change color or it basically not change color. It gives you the color of the eye. So you, you, you can see people with blue eye, people with brown eye or black eye and whatsoever. So that is how we understand the role of the iris. Then you have the blind spot that is seen. Uh, fovea where you have the brightest or the clearest vision we can say blind spot where you do not have the vision that is seen and finally it connects to the optic nerve and that sends the light signal into the electric signal so this is the whole concept that we need to understand about eye parrot and the cage experiment so on one side of the stick we have parrot the other side we have the cage what would happen if I rotate this stick? When I rotate this stick, it would appear as if the parrot is inside the cage. And how does this happen? This happens because of the motion which is being tracked in our eyes and the image that is formed on our retina does not vanish immediately. It remains there for 1 16th of the second. Now, if these frames are less than 1 16th of a second, it would appear as a movie or it would appear in a continuum. If the speed of the stick is slowed down to a very, very uh, slow speed, we could say, what would happen? It would appear that the parrot and the cage are separate. So that means usually when you shoot movies, what happens is at least 24 pictures uh, per second or faster are taken into account. And then we say there is a continuum that is seen. And that's what which happens with our eye. So I, our eye behaves in a very very similar fashion like that. The another important concepts that we need to understand about eye is the issues related to our vision. As you grow old what happens is your uh, vision becomes cloudy and foggy and that is because of the formation of the cataract. Uh, the lens of the eye becomes opaque and what requires to be done is that lens needs to be replaced by an artificial lens. So the original lens is removed and the artificial lens is inserted. Now when uh, we study about eye, it is very very important that we must know certain things to take care about. So definitely if you are using spectacles, it's recommended that you use them. Uh, you do not go or do your work without spectacles. The next important thing that you need to understand is you must have proper light. The light should not be too bright or too dim. So both of those are harmful for your eyes. Do not look onto the sun directly, especially uh, we say during solar eclipse, this is what commonly happens. You can have significant eye damages if you look directly onto the sun. So exposure to the sun directly can definitely harm your cornea. The next important thing is do not constantly rub your eyes and always maintain a normal distance while reading. We recommend 25 centimeters as a normal distance that is seen. Uh, what is good for eyes? So definitely you have raw carrot, broccoli, green vegetables which are good. Dairy and dairy products mainly cheese, curd, butter, uh, fruits are good for your vision because they also have significant amount of vitamin A that is present. So that is one of the important things. Those fruits and vegetables which are predominantly orange in color so it could be mango it could be carrots usually have higher proportions of vitamin a the next important thing that we understand is uh each eye each insect or each animal have a unique eye for example let's talk about butterflies butterflies interestingly have a compound eye that means their eye is made up of little 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 mini eyes and that is a unique characteristic of the butterfly eyes the next important uh, organism that we talk about is owl owl classically has a night vision what does that mean as we studied before rods are present in significant higher amount and that's why night vision becomes much more easier those organisms which predominantly have day vision like us human beings have developed cones so the proportion of rods and cones depend on your day and night vision again crab is an interesting animal if 
crab is being attacked even from behind the cab, crab would know it and how does this happen the eyes of the crab are very very small definitely but it enables it to sense all around so that is one of the reasons that crab can sense even if it is attacked from behind so that's again a interesting characteristic that we know so as we said each of the animals have their own uh, characteristics that are seen and the eyes of each of the animals have certain unique uh, characteristics that are seen the next is uh, some of the people we know or we have heard about are visually impaired. Now when we say they are visually impaired, this impairedness could be either because of a disease or because of an injury that has occurred and they are not able to identify the things clearly. There could be a reduced vision or there could be an absence of vision that could be seen. So there are various aids that are used. First is the non-optical aids. Non-optical aids include visual aids uh, which could be in the form of magnification of the words that could be seen in it could be providing adequate amount of light that is required or adequate intensity of light we could rather say and maintaining a proper distance for the reading the next is Tactual uh, aids. Now, tactual aids are those which can be sensed through touch. So, Braille is an interesting example. We'll understand about Braille in a while. So, bra Braille writer and stylus are usually used for taking notes, reading and writing. The next important thing is auditory aids. Auditory aids means through the cassettes, through the audio inputs, uh, talking books, you have information that is given. The next is electronic aids. Now, electronic aids have come up with technological advancements here you have talking computers talking calculators that are devised and they can have very good computational tasks that could be done also you have other electronic gadgets for example cctv uh, then you can have enlarged printed material that could be seen uh, suitable Contrast and illumination could be adjusted. And the next is uh, optical aids. So these were all non-optical aids coming on to optical aids. There could be lens corrections that could be done. For example, if it is required, there could be a bifocal lens. There could be contact lenses that could be there or tinted lenses that could be there. So all those are optical adjustments or telescopic aids that are given. Now, as we said, one of the important textual aids is Braille. Now, Braille was discovered by Louis Braille, who himself was a visually challenged person. And his first concepts were published back in 1821. When he started with the Braille, he first talked about understanding letters, then numbers, and then combination of letters and numbers to form the language and the complete uh, braille system. So each of the vertical, there are two vertical columns and each of the vertical column would have three rows. So overall six rows that could be seen and each or uh, six cells that could be seen and then each of the letter would have the combination. So how C is red, A is red and T is red would make the cat and that is how uh, braille actually works. So you also have numerous uh, people who have achieved exceptionally good with uh, help through the non-optical and the optical aids. Good examples are Helen Keller. Helen Keller has published a series of books and the story of my life is one of the best books that have been written. Uh, she was uh, Born, she was she got blind even uh, at a minor age of 18 months and then uh, she graduated and completed her university as well uh, the next important examples from india are divakar who has been a amazing singer then you have Ravindra Jain, who uh, obtained the sangeet prabhakar degree uh, you have examples of lal advani who himself being visually impaired, has worked and has inspired uh, people across the globe. He has been a member of the Association for Special Education and Rehabilitation of Disabled in India and also represented India in the various Braille forums in United States and UNESCO as well. So those are some of the named examples that we understand today.